Mayoral candidate Josh Matlow is focusing on his plan for seniors today. We'll take you live to this announcement right now. Without financial, psychological and social well-being supports, seniors are vulnerable to lose their independence and their quality of life. Transit expenses keep going up and for a senior on fixed income, that can be the ability, inability, that can create an inability to get away from their home and find social cohesion, a sense of community. It can lead to isolation and loneliness. Nine in 10 Canadian seniors say that aging in place promotes independence. Some seniors frequently call 911 because they don't have adequate supports closer to home. And approximately 49% of pedestrian fatalities are seniors throughout our city. It's a staggering number. And it's unacceptable. Dr. Samir Sinha, my friend who I've co-chaired the Senior Strategy Accountability Table with for several years, has said that if we don't address affordability and the ability for seniors to be able to make incomes when they need them, that we could bankrupt our governments in the coming years. We need to take action. We all benefit from an age-friendly city. So my plan to create an age-friendly Toronto includes investing $6 million to extend the city's fare pass to discount seniors when they want to access the TTC. It's time not only to invest in reversing the TTC cuts that have affected all of us across the city, but to ensure that seniors can better afford to take transit so they can get to whether it be recreation, places of worship, employment, or to see family. I want seniors to be able to afford to take transit, and I'm going to be lowering the fares. I also want seniors, thank you. I also want seniors to be able to, if they choose to, age in place. There will be those of us who will need long-term care assistance. But for so many people, they'd far rather be able to age in their own homes, in the neighborhoods that they may have raised a family in. And that's why I'm going to be investing $5 million into our Homemakers and Nurses Services program. This supports low-income seniors. When it comes to light housekeeping, laundry, grocery shopping, meal preparation, the basics of life to be able to make it feasible and realistic to remain in your home with the assistance where you live rather than having to go to seek help somewhere else. I'm going to be supporting age-friendly housing solutions. We need to change the urban planning process in the City of Toronto. Everything from ensuring that there's a tree canopy and benches on our main streets, accessibility to our playgrounds and public spaces, and to ensure that if you are a senior living in your home, and you might be house rich, but you can't make the groceries because your pension isn't keeping up with inflation, you have the ability to live at home and have others be able to live in the other floors of your home. We need to create naturally occurring retirement communities in our neighborhoods where we plan for having everything from health-related services to grocery stores nearby so that you can age in your home, in your community, to continue living near your neighbors, the people you love and see every day. Thank you. <laughs> Healthcare access. I'm going to be investing $2.1 million to, expend, to expand our community paramedicine program by 50% to support seniors through home visits, wellness clinics, and referrals. You know, I mentioned earlier that too many seniors rely on calling 911 for support. When we have paramedics visiting you where you live, to ensure that you have the care that you need and the support that's necessary that will cut down on the demand on 911 that benefits all of us, all of our health, all of our safety. <clears throat> I'm also going to be advocating as our seniors advocate and as our mayor to ensure that the province works with us to expand CareTO's program of emotion-focused care in long-term care facilities. You may remember I brought this to City Council as a City Councillor. We should be done with the days that too many long-term care homes are treated like institutions or warehouses. They should be caring, supportive environments where any one of us should be proud to see a loved one live 
or any of us live, and the necessary supports for the people who work there to provide the time and the care and the approach that they want to provide seniors. We can absolutely transform long-term care in our city with the partnership of other levels of governments. I'm going to improve our social and recreation spaces. I'm going to be investing $1.35 million to open up the cafes in the main lobbies at our long-term care homes. You know about these? Isn't that great? You know, we've learned that when seniors are isolated and lonely, it affects not only their longevity, but their quality of life and their well-being today. To have spaces for programming, spaces where their kids and family can come visit them, where they can interact intergenerally, intergenerationally with the rest of the community, it means so much to seniors. But I can tell you, as somebody who's volunteered with seniors, it means so much to the rest of us too, because we get to learn from you. These are spaces that are important to all of us. I'm also going to be opening up libraries on Sundays, schools after hours and on weekends and holidays. These are community hubs. There are so many seniors in our society who live alone. And I want to create more spaces in the heart of our communities for us to come together, to build together, to learn together, and to have more educational opportunities. And most importantly, just to be together. That's what helps our health. We learned that during the pandemic, and we should never forget. And I also know that there are many older adults, sometimes sadly and sometimes because they want to, who are still looking for meaningful work. I'm going to create more opportunities through our city-funded agencies to create opportunities for seniors so that if you need to work or if you choose to work, you are not going to be subject to ageism any longer when I'm mayor. We are going to see you as people with experience and knowledge, people we can learn from, people who we benefit from, and people who contribute to a vibrant and healthy Toronto. Now, over the past decade, I've been the seniors' advocate. I've championed seniors because I believe in you, but I also have a father who has Alzheimer's, who's at the memory care floor of Baycrest. I had a grandmother who was at the Cedarville Terrace who also had dementia. I lost my mom to cancer seven years ago. This is a personal journey for me, too. There's nothing more meaningful to me to ensure that we have an age-friendly city so that we are well, that we're healthy, and that we take care of each other. And I want to conclude by telling you all that I also believe it's important to earn people's support and trust if you're running for mayor. There are a number of candidates who are making announcements. Sometimes there are announcements that are re-announcements of announcements that I've made. And I appreciate their support. Yeah. <laughs> But you cannot earn Torontonian support if you can't demonstrate how you're going to pay for what you promise. So part of our, our plan is a detailed and costed analysis of exactly how I'm going to pay for everything I just told you. Because if you can't do that, it's not real. We're done with those days. Politics has to change. It has to be about investing in the people of Toronto and supporting our quality of life. Thank you for being here. I love you. I appreciate you. And I look forward to working with you as mayor to improve all of our lives, including the seniors who live in Toronto. Thank you.